so we know about microwaves microwaves are the a part of electromagnetic waves with the wavelength that ranges from 1 meter to 1 millimeter with the frequency 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz further the microwaves has been classified into three different categories one is ultra high frequency another one is super high frequency another one is extremely high frequency so the ranges are given in the slide the ultra high frequency means 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz super high frequency means 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz extremely high frequency is nothing but 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz so the entire region 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz is classified into three different categories in general in a physics micro means 10 power minus 6 but the micro waves are not at all related to the wavelength are in the micrometer range. I already mentioned in the first slide, the microwaves, the wavelength is 1 meter to 1 millimeter range. So it is not in the micrometer range. So the micro is refers to small here. Small means it is compared to the radio waves, this is smaller. So that is the microwave's uh, mean. So microwave's uh, means that it is a smaller radio waves. So unlike uh, the radio waves, the microwaves uh, do not diffractor, but it can travel with the uh, line of sight. Unlike a lower frequency radio waves, it do not diffractor and it follows the surface waves. Another one, it, it is also reflected from the ionosphere. So further, the IEEE society has uh, divided the bands into different categories. L band, S band, C band, X band, KU band, K band, KR, KA band, like that, right? so many classifications will be there. So the L band is the lowest band, 1 to 2 GHz, it used for the military applications. And S band is 2 to 4, that is used for the LAN and Bluetooth devices, some of the weather prediction radars, they are using this frequency. Another one is C, band is 4 to 8 for a long distance radio communication that will be used for The X band 8 to 12 gigahertz is used for a radio wave communication, radar and uh, terrestrial application. All these K bands will be used for the satellite communication only. So the satellite dish in our uh, residence which can receive the satellite uh, KU band from 12 to 14 gigahertz microwave beam. Uh, if the distance is around uh, 22,000 uh, miles. So these are some of the domestic applications available in our home and military and other applications in the radar and the weather prediction. So many applications are useful in the microwaves. So this slide is very important. Why the microwave absorption material is very important? Generally, microwave do not contain the sufficient energy to chemically change the substance by ionization. By ionization. So the, in general, the microwaves are not at all harmful. However, the microwaves has a small significant adverse effect on the biological software uh, soft organs. Biologically soft organs, it can be affected by small level. However, the long term exposure or the consistent exposure of the microwave has some risk problems. So generally, the inherent property of the microwave is heating. So it can heat the any substance. It is a unique property of the microwave. So the continuous exposure of the microwave or the periodical exposure of the microwave leads to a but the small biological things that will uh, lead to some genetical changes. So the microwave absorption materials are very essential in day-to-day -day life to safeguard us. For example, the people living near the cell phone towers, they may cause some cancer or they may get some vomiting sensation. Like that, so, so many difficulties are there. So we have to uh, put the proper uh, microwave absorption material. 
So during the second war itself, the microwave uh, radars are generated. In 1946, the England has, uh, in 1942 or 3, I think so, around that year, uh, the microwave radars are developed by the British people. The every signals they are transmitted by this through the uh, microwaves only. And they are given all the signals. After some time, all the soldiers they are getting the vomited sensation, so much tired. Some of them are uh, a mentally disorder, like that. They have faced so many difficulties during the World War. So the microwaves are little harmful in compared to the other ways, but we have to take in care some of the microwave absorption materials. So what are the problems in engineering? We will discuss. One is electromagnetic interference. Electromagnetic interference is nothing but the unwanted signal interference in your devices. So the cross track may be. So the unwanted signal interfered in your device is called as EMI, ele uh, electromagnetic interference. Another one is uh, electromagnetic pulse that is very dangerous. It has a very short duration of the small pulse will be interact with your system, but it will damage your system. Sometimes the blast will be there in the system. So it is kind of a nuclear blast. It is an electric blast. So electromagnetic pulse, that is also a, uh, another cause. So we have to prepare some material to capable to uh, absorb the microwaves. It can give us a free environment for the electronic instruments. So some of the microwave absorption materials. We can uh, microwave absorption power is defined by P is equal to the conduction loss plus dielectric loss plus magnetic loss. This is a general formula for the microwave absorption. So absorption P is equal to 1 by sigma E square. It is nothing but a dielectric uh, conductivity loss. Another one is dielectrical loss, omega epsilon epsilon r dash E square and magnetic loss is given by omega mu naught mu w dash into h square e and h are the complementary of the electric and magnetic fields omega is a microwave frequency sigma is a conductivity epsilon naught and mu naught is a permeability and permeability of the three phase epsilon r double dash and epsilon r double dash which are the imaginary part of the relative permittivity and permeability of the uh, materials so according to the classical electromagnetic theory, the, effective, the effectiveness of electromagnetic shielding is given by the formula that can be expressed by following relation by the thickness and mu dash and AC conductivity. So AC is the effectiveness is equal to 10 log sigma AC divided by 16 omega epsilon naught mu double dash plus 20 into D. Uh, screen del del delta in log e. That is a general formula for the electromagnetic shielding. So mu dash is given by sigma AC is equal to omega epsilon naught epsilon double dash. And mu double dash is given by ms by 2 h a into alpha. So that's are uh, some of the formulas. So what is the brain? Uh, problem in the electromagnetic base is whenever the electromagnetic electric field is maximum at the same time the magnetic field is also a maximum here see this is the electromagnetic wave a typical representation of the electromagnetic wave here the electric field reaches the maximum at the same time magnetic field is also a maximum here the electric field is a medium here the electric field is also a medium here the electric field and magnetic field is minimum like that here it is maximum here it is a moderate, here it is minimum and moderate like that. So the electric and magnetic field will vary both in same phase. So in, in this paper, they have discussed about the various parts of the uh, electromagnetic absorption power. So dot one is electrical absorption and this one is magnetic absorption. So this powder we prepared 
FeCOCU ferrous copper and cobalt powder it will be gives the magnetic losses very high but electrical losses minimum whereas the cobalt powder here also the same way magnetic field is higher the electrical field is higher whereas the solid Cu copper uh, copper as the electric and magnetic field will be minimum but the absorption power is very less around 20 here Fe powder they will take and only the Fe powder here also magnetic field loss is higher the electrical loss is minimum alumina they have taken the reverse is here the electrical loss is maximum the magnetic loss is minimum it's the same way is no powder if you take an no powder here the electrical loss is minimum the magnetic loss will be a constant So tungsten carbide powder like that. Uh, here also the electric and magnetic field variation will be there. And the Fe2O3 the powder powders they have taken. Here also the it's different. Here the electric field is maximum and magnetic field is minimum. So one can obtain this kind of powder. Fe Fe2O4. Simply written Fe3O4. It is Fe Fe2O4. So it is one of the spinel ferrites. If you choose like that means the electric and magnetic field are more or less in the same manner. It is maximum more or less. So it's the same way the tungsten carbide with the cobalt powder is also gives the same result. Is it no is the cobalt powder? See some results are different. There also the electric field and magnetic field is the same order. So we know about the spinel ferrite. Spinel ferrite is nothing but a, a, another family of the uh, magnetic materials. It is called as a spinel ferrite. And the general formula is nothing but M Fe two O four, where M is a divalent element. It may be a barium, silicon, Fe Fe two plus, Mg two plus, Na two plus, Cg plus, and G two plus. Generally, the most number of the people are working in barium based spinel ferrite because of this uh, microwave absorption or switching uh, devices. So this is the uh, structure of the spinel ferrite. Uh, the unit cell has FEC structure with the A formula unit. The oxygen atoms and the anion should be arranged by the two different ways. One is tetravalent site, another one is octavalent site. So the magnetic properties and other properties are mostly dependent on the, the atoms in the uh, tetragonal site as well as octagonal site. What kind of interaction will be there? So based on this interaction, the magnetic property or electrical property can be changed. So the effect of rare earth doping. So the usually the people are doping a small amount of rare earth with the ferrite. That can change the some of the interesting magnetic property. Earlier there is a no rare earth elements, only a few interaction will be there. When you add a small amount of a rare earth ion, the interaction will be changes to REFE interaction. Instead of FE interaction, new interaction will come REFE interaction. Earlier, the uh, electrons will be 3D coupling will be there. Here, the 3D and 4F coupling will be comes into play. So, it's, uh, it is responsible for the newly absorbed uh, magnetic properties. So, that means a small strain will be introduced. That strain will be changed at the electrical and magnetic property dramatically. So the first one is uh, the effect of doping element. So these two papers are available in the online. You can uh, refer this. So first one is uh, band gap we are seeing. Generally the band gap is not a parameter for the electromagnetic wave absorption. However, once if you want to die uh, high uh, dielectric properties, it automatically goes to the band gap is higher. Whenever the band gap is higher, you can get the higher high dielectric constant. So this is the band gap of the CF material, copper Fe2O4 material. 
in the same we are introduced in some of small uh, 50% of copper by mn so that leads to a bank cap of 2.1 electron volt from 1.16 it goes to 2.1 electron volt in the same way we keep the same way see of mn of instead of fp uh, we are introduced a small amount of la 0.5 so if you introduce a from 0.5, the band gap is close to 5.33. So that is the advantage. So here, if you see the previous slide, it is 1.66 electron volt band gap. That will be converted into 5.33. So this is effect of doping. So see here the magnetical properties. This one is the CMF. If you introduce a lanthanum, somewhat it may be, uh, somewhat it may be okay. When you compare to this copper, copper doped means we can get a good amount of uh, mantle property. However, we can compromise with this because of the dielectric constant. Our aim is that. Slide. Here, if you increase the dielectric constant, the S1 dash, sigma will be increases. Whenever the sigma will be increases, the effectiveness will be increases. So the dielectric constant if you increases means sigma AC will increase, sigma AC increase means SC will increase. In another way, if you decrease the magnetization, saturation magnetization, if you decrease MS, new double dash will also increase. If new double dash is uh, decreases, such a SE will increase. So the new dash will be decreases, uh, dielectric constant will be increases. That is the main aim. So we have to increase the dielectric constant of the material. At the same time, we have to reduce the saturation magnetization. So another uh, another example is and this is also a we are wearing the doping element. We keep M1 and Cu half of instead of LA should be varied here. Instead of 0.5, I will have varied uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.05, 0 0.75, and the 0.1 it is 0.1. So a small amount of doping will be added. So see here is the band gap will be increases when the lanthanum content will be increases the band gap is increased from 4 to 4.5 4.55 initially it is 4.46 initial it goes to 4.56 so this is the dielectric loss and dielectric constant Dielectric class is also decreased when compared to this. So, this is a magnetic uh, property. Wherever, uh, however, it is may be closed, but we have reduced the saturation magnetization. So, this is the microwave absorption property of this material. See here, this is we have recorded the X band. Around the edge of the X band, we have the soft peak. So, it, sim, uh, it indicates that. The preferred materials has been capable to absorb the microwaves. So, based on the thickness, it can be varied because the thickness is also one of the parameters to change the uh, effectiveness, shielding effectiveness. So, this is a summary. Here, M1 Cu of it changed the X composition from uh, 0.005 to 0.1. Here the band gap is varied from 0.4 to 5. The dielectric constant will be varied from 150 to 101. It is more the variation of the 50 percent. And the dielectric loss is also decreased. The complex the dielectric constant is also increased. And the magnetization is decreased from 60 to 0.1. Whenever the dielectric constant increases, and the magnetization decreases means 
we can get the the effective shieldingness that I already explained. Here also, I can one second I have to mention. So, if you decrease the saturation magnetization, it leads to decreasing the new dash and sigma effectiveness will be increases. At In the same time, if you increase the and double dash sigma dielectric constant, the AC conductivity is increases. In the same that also a factor for AC. As I mentioned, the thickness is also one of the parameter to increase the effective shieldness. If you increase the thickness of the any material, you can uh, even the non microwave absorption material, if you put at a very large distance, uh, thickness means you can shield the microwave. So, the for the same material, you can prefer the different thickness, you can explore the effectiveness using this formula. Another one is the effect of radiation. So, the we have prepared one material, barium hexaparite. It is a white type uh, hexaparite. We simply prepare the material and uh, expose on the uh, radiation. So, this is. Uh, uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is a noise in your background, sir. Can you please rectify it? Noise. Uh, yes, sir. Now it's clear, sir, but it comes on regularly. So, can you please rectify it, sir? Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. It is a personated sample. In the personated sample, the magnetization is higher. Due to the radiation, we can reduce the saturation magnetization. Once the saturation magnetization is reduced, you can increase the effectiveness, the shielding effectiveness. So this we have done through the radiation. So generally the white type hexaparate BA if you equal O uh, over 19, the unit cell contains 32, I'm sorry, 38 O2 minus and two two atoms of BA2 plus and 24 AP3 plus and due to the shift ion radiation and the sample it creates more oxygen vacancies. So the oxygen vacancies are the uh, responsible for the decreasing the saturation magnetization. The saturation magnetization decreases leads to the increase the effectiveness. That is the, our idea here. Another one is the uh, effect of PDA. Here we have prepared two, uh, two kind of samples Ni, NDX, Fe2 minus X, O4 with a different composition with or without PDA. And we have studied what is the effect of PDA in this code. Uh, so this is the structural data of the sample. This is without uh, PDA, this is with the PDA. The structural parameter shows that there is no difference uh, and due to the PDA. Because the PDA is added in a small uh, one is the in the weight ratio. The band gap is also shows that uh, it is very similar. Here the band gap is around uh, 3.18, the same will be in the other 3.45. A small change in variation will be there. The dielectric constant. Here the dielectric constant is around 1400 only. Here it goes to around 1800. So the 400 variation will be there. Here the minimum will be around 700. Here the minimum will be around 800. So we have increased the dielectric constant. The saturation magnetization. Also, they have decreased. Here it's also a small amount of decrease will be there. It is, here it is reaches 100. Here it is around 80 will be there. So saturation magnetization is little bit decreased. So here it is a comparison. See the director constant is uh, 1377 here. It is 1646 here. Here 639, here it's 648. So we have a little bit increased the dielectric constant when compared to this and the dielectric loss is also a little bit decreased. So this one is the another sample. Uh, the MS, here it is 94, here it is 80, uh, 84. Clearly the 10 EMU will be decreased for the gram. 
in all the sample is the same way it is decreased here it is 42 here it is 41 a small amount of decrease will be there in this uh, analytic property what happened here means the pva is a non toxic and water soluble polymer it has a strong uh, strong forming ability with the high dielectric constant so that is the process for the increasing the dielectric properties generally the pva group the hydroxyl group is blended with the pva that will attach with the lanthanides that will form a very weak uh, static uh, interaction but uh, the, the small amount of uh, static interaction will be the responsible for this increasing the dielectric constant so that is the beauty of pva doping in the same way we have studied uh, uh, pva in na lax fe2 minus instead of neodymium we put a lanthanum this paper is also published in uh, material chemistry physics and ceramic international uh, with and without pva see here in the lanthanum case it is uh, different for uh, here it is 3.2 uh, sorry 329 here it is 895 dramatical change in the dielectric constant here it is 780 here it is 1871 in the same way it is 1595 here here it is 1863 2700 here it is little bit increased The real part of the permeability is always used to characterize the storage capability of the electrical energy and the imaginary part and the complex permeability is responsible for the loss capability of the electrical energy. And high dielectric constant is always the preferred to restrict the impedance mismatch at the interface uh, between the air and the surface of the nanomaterial and thus to control the electromagnetic uh, reflectivity at the surface. So once if you control the electromagnetic reflectivity in the surface, means the microwave can easy to absorb the, uh, the material can easily absorb the microwaves. So this is the graphene coated FE nanoparticles. So the different kind of uh, FE composition will be studied here, and the different uh, the same range X band to uh, sorry the. Uh, 2 to 18 the uh, wide band let's see 1.3 mm 2 mm 2.5 mm 3 3.5 mm 4 here it is another nothing but the thickness of the pellet we need how much thickness is used to measure the uh, effectiveness shielding effectiveness so the same so the peaks indicates that it can be absorbed the microwave absorption in this range so that is the uh, graph So this is a control, this is the FU2 graphing. Means this is without the graphing, this is a with the graphing. So this graph shows that the usage of graphing with the FE, uh, FE nanocomposite will be useful for the microwave absorption at different range of frequencies. So in the literature, if you go for me, there are so many, so many papers you can find. Correct plus reduced graphene, correct plus ethanol, correct plus ethanol plus carbon, correct plus CNT, correct plus pani plus reduced graphene oxide, correct plus WC3 pani. So many, so many compositions they will make. All the aim is only one to increase the dielectric constant and to reduce the magnetical properties. So various composition you can put. If someone is interested, you can use the ferrites plus NIO and you can make some of the uh, reduced carbon. You can uh, study the same. Like that, so many will be there. We go for this paper means you can get, see, this is one of the heavy paper you can be published. You can see what is happening in all this. So self cleaning paint can be prepared in nowadays. So self cleaning paint and surface can be used to using this uh, uh, 
correct particles sir. changes mm -hmm. microwave absorption the heat base absorption will be there where the temperature is 168 here it is uh, around uh, 192 so the temperature variation will be there if it ties to here it will be very easily you bring it to the side it won't be melt for some time kind of uh, things can be done. Another one is uh, magnetic ceramics can be done using this microwave absorption material. This I already mentioned the FE, FE2O4, the FE3 carbohydrates are normally used for this kind of material. So, so the magnetic ceramics that can be used. This kind of uh, nano ferrite shielding will be available in market now. So what is the advantage of this? Um, this means the absorption frequency can be 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz can be absorbed by the ferrite based. If you introduce the rare earth based means you can absorb the 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. You can absorb the wide range of materials. That is an um, advantage. The wider range of absorption can be achieved with the new materials. Another one is uh, instead of rare earth, you can introduce ethanol uh, and the CU dope price. In that way, you can have some of the antibacterial activities. Like this, uh, you can use the same material for phase changing material. The outside heart can be converted into cool inside. And also, it can be possible to protect the coating of UV in effective ways. Thank you. Any queries? Hello. Thank you, Hello. sir. Now the session is open for the queries. Participants, if you have any doubts or queries, you can please ask the speaker now. I repeat, participants, if you have any queries or doubts, you can please ask the speaker now. I to type in this uh, chat box also. If they have any questions, sir. Okay. So can you conclude the uh, talk now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now I request Varshini to yes, conclude sir. the session with a vote of thanks. Ma'am, no, no, just one minute. I want to. One second, yes, I yes. have to say something. Okay, sir. Shall I go ahead with the vote of thanks? Uh, uh, please wait for a second. Uh, I already mentioned this is the 
the general formula for the microwave absorption or any kind of radiation absorption. So we have to do any kind of new material or functional material. You have to increase the dielectric constant. By the way, you have to increase the AC conductivity. And another way is you have to decrease the saturation magnetization and this leads to a decrease in new double dash. Again, the AC will be increased. So that is the aim. So I already mentioned in the last slide. The slide. There are, there are so many, so many studies are going on nowadays. You, now we have put the PVA plus the right. That session will be over now. Maximum number of people are studying the three level ferrite plus one polymer and another kind of one material. So, so that kind of uh, studies you can put and you can get the new results. So the same way you can put a ferrite plus multiwall TNT plus Al2O3 or zinc carbonate or reduced carbon. Everything you have to put three to four system. Then you have to study. Then you can get some of the right range of uh, absorption. So that is the aim of the new studies nowadays. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, we have a question for you from the participant, Shobana Narayana Swami. The question is, if we prepare spinal nanoferrite with surfactant, what kind of changes that we can expect in accordance with its photocatalytic activity that it, that is without surfactant? Yeah. Here, type the question, madam, or... Uh... Yes, yes, yes. You can see in the chat box, sir. Yes. And some of the uh, magnetical properties may be very, I think so. So that may lead to decreasing the band cap. So, out of antiquity may be increased sometimes. That is also depends upon the temperature of the sample preparation also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hope the question is uh, answered. And uh, now I request Varshini to conclude the session with a vote of thanks. Thank you, Brinda. If the only prayer you say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. On behalf of everyone attending the meeting and our supporters, event organizer, and as a coordinator, I extend my hearty thanks to Dr. K. Sakti Pandey for sharing his precious time with us and exchanging valuable information to our active participants. The session as a whole was very informative and thought-provoking, sir. Sure, our participants will make great use out of this content shared today. I wholeheartedly thank our supporting promoters, Sai Varani Creations, RK Engineering Works, and Believe Motivations for helping us in organizing this amazing webinar session and allowing us to be a part of it. Last but not the least, I thank the participants who were cooperative and patient throughout the session. Hope this session was useful to the audience. Participants will receive the feedback form only on August 26, 2020. Certificates will be issued to the participants who attend more than five sessions. Until next time, this is Varshini signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you participants. Thank you for your uh, presence today.